The prophet Zechariah talks about Jesus more than any Old Testament minor prophet. Zechariah was probably in exile brought back to Israel with Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, and the others. The book comes in three parts. Chapters 1 through 6 has eight visions, chapters 7 through 8 has four messages, and chapters 9 through 14 has one king. The book opens with a prologue that repeats and echoes the theme of the minor prophets. Return to God and he will return to you. Maybe take a pen or a sharpie and write return at the top of all 12 of the minor prophets in your Bible. God uses this cyclical repetitive theme to underline covenant importance as well as show his inexhaustible grace. After the prologue, well, l let me just ask you this. Have you ever had a crazy all night dream? Like so real and vivid? Zechariah had eight visions all of them bonkers, and he had them all in one night. It's the next morning, Zachariah's like, um, does anyone have a coffee? So, vision one, he sees a man riding a red horse through myrtle trees with red, white, and chestnut-colored horses behind him. Vision two, he sees four horns and four craftsmen. Vision three, he sees a man measuring the walls of Jerusalem so God can install a permanent wall of fire for protection of his people, concluding with this terrifying little verse, Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. Vision four is a high priest's cleansing, including a promised branch, Jesus, am I right? Vision five, he sees a golden lampstand and two olive trees. Vision six, a flying scroll. Vision seven, a woman in a basket. That one's terrifying. Don't, don't read that one if you have trouble sleeping at night. Vision 8, he sees four chariots from mountains of bronze. And he sees action, the ceremonial crowning of Joshua. Not Joshua from the book of Joshua, but a different Joshua, not the Joshua from the book of Joshua. Anyways, I wish I had time to explain all of this in detail, but here's the point of the visions. Here's a few things. Number one, they predict God's protection of his people. Number two, they show God's renewal and purification of the priesthood. Number three, they symbolize the rebuilding of the temple and they foretell that. Number four, they show God's judgment of evil. Number five, they symbolize the removal of sin from God's people. And number six, the coming of Messiah. We're not really going to do a Jesus moment in this book because basically all of Zechariah is a Jesus moment. Really though, you could also see this book as a prologue to the New Testament. Its vision is focused squarely on where we will be in 500 years time launching the new covenant and revitalizing humanity when a baby is born to a confused dad and a virgin mother. Chapters 7 and 8 are messages that move from fasting in exile over Jerusalem's destruction to feasting in Jerusalem and blessing from God. It says in 8 verse 19, The fasts of the 4th, 5th, 7th, and 10th months shall be to the house of Judah seasons of joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. It's a party. You want to go? Chapters 9 through 14 are concentrated prophecies about the Messiah as a prologue to the New Testament. Chapters 9 through 11 are about the first coming of Jesus and a bunch of prophecies soon to be fulfilled. We see a king riding on a donkey and it's fulfilled on Palm Sunday. We see incredible awareness of the blood covenant. We see the cornerstone of Israel from the tribe of Judah. That's the tribe Jesus is from. We see 30 pieces of silver, the shepherd being killed, silver being thrown into a potter's field, which is all a picture of Judas, Jesus' betrayer. But more than just the prophecies being fulfilled. It's a commentary on the state of Israel 500 years in advance. It says the people wander like sheep without a shepherd. There's a picture of a foolish shepherd abandoning the sheep. And then chapters 12 through 14 are about the second coming of Christ, the one that we're still waiting for. It says Judah will be like a blazing pot. It says the repentance of Israel will happen when they realize they killed Jesus. It says that the return of Christ will happen at the Mount of Olives, the small hill just east of Jerusalem where he ascended from. But this time, when he comes back, his feet will cause it to split in two. Zechariah also sees Ezekiel's river flowing from Jerusalem and the universal reestablishment of the Feast of Booths. That's the cool feast, the one where you go camping. One of the final verses in the book says this, And on that day there shall be inscribed on the bells of the horses, Holy to the Lord. Wow. I know this book is a lot. There's a, there's a lot going on here. I'm sure that you can see it. Zechariah is a prologue for the New Testament. It's used in the New Testament quite often, too, compared to the other minor prophets. It's quoted in Ephesians, Matthew, John, Mark, all over the place. So Zechariah's book is over now, but his ministry would continue until he was brutally murdered inside the temple on the exact site where Abraham was called to kill Isaac. The man Zechariah prophesied about, Jesus, tells us of his tragic end in Matthew 23. So, that's Zechariah. It's a prologue to the New Testament, but before we get there, we will examine Malachi, an epilogue 
to the Old Testament. God created, man fell, Jesus promised, Jesus fulfilled, Jesus followed, Jesus returning, and the Bible is God's word.